Great, great to see you again. Uh, yeah. I want to start you, by uh, asking. Bruce. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. I want to start to, by asking. Uh, and now that you're at the uh, Carnegie Mellon and the Software Engineering Institute, the CERT now stands for the Cybersecurity Engineering and Resilience Team. Given that, uh, can you explain uh, your chief mission going forward and how you support the work that's done at say DHS and DoD? Let me start with uh, uh, talking about the CERT division, Bruce. You know, when we started out uh, as a uh, an organization in 1988 as part of the Software Engineering Institute, it truly was a computer emergency response team uh, created in the aftermath of the Morris Worm. Now we just go by the, you know, the the phrase CERT, C-E-R-T. Um, it, it's it's a trademark. It's you know an acronym, but. It, I don't want folks to be thinking of us just as emergency response. It's all about cybersecurity, engineering, and resilience. Uh, and, and we're trying to, in our efforts, not be reactive like a computer emer emergency response team, but to be proactive through discipline, cybersecurity, engineering, and building resilience in upfront. And, and that that's what really excites me about my position here as the director of the CERT division. And this is kind of a culmination of where I've been throughout my professional career. You know, with the over 30 years in the Air Force as a communications and later cyber um, officer, um, my role at DHS in the organization now known as CISA, and uh, culminating in my role as the federal government's chief information security officer. Um, you know, I went into the startup world. I learned a lot there, Did uh, had a lot of success in private sector. Now I'm bringing it all together in the research and engineering that we're doing as a federally funded research and development center here at Carnegie Mellon. Thank you, Greg. Um, excellent uh, career uh, journey, by the way. Uh, and and uh, you're a true leader in our, in our cybersecurity profession. I want to ask you, no, thank you. in terms of the uh, all the malware and bad actor behavior that you observe and new ways in which these actors are changing and adapting to to counter cyber defenses, what is it that keeps you up at night in terms of all this various activity in the in the cyber threat world? Well, there's always going to be threats out there, Bruce. Um, and you, uh, clearly, cyber criminal groups are very well funded. They're very powerful. They're buying a lot of great talent into the support the cyber criminal groups, and, and the nation state actors that are out there are remain potent uh, threats. But the thing that really keeps me up at night is the amount of complexity that we've inserted into our cyber defenses. Um, as you take a look at the evidence, the statistics clearly show that uh, the vast majority, and I would uh, say that the measures I'm seeing is over 95% of all of the incidents can be tracked down to kind of a human error that's been at its root cause based on complexity. Uh, you know, we're buying tools that take months, if not years to master. We're adding layer upon layer upon layer. And as one of my um, my uh, technical leads here at the, uh, the Institute, uh, Will Dorman, who put together that log four shell scanner, uh, Will's on one of my uh, research teams looking at complexity with me. Uh, Will says, simplicity is the arch nemesis of our adversaries. And I, I think that's absolutely right. And complexity of our own defenses is what keeps me up at night because it's outpacing our ability to properly install, configure, maintain, and operate our own systems. That creates gaps that adversaries are taking advantage of. That's good color. Can you can you uh, give us any insight into anything that you're seeing with respect to what's going on in Eastern Europe these days and how that uh, is trickling into the uh, the cyber threat landscape? Well, what I can share is uh, uh, we're seeing some uh, similar tactics, techniques, and procedures that we've seen, uh, you know, nation state actors use to bully uh, other countries. Uh, 
they're they're using it a lot. Uh, we're seeing uh, ma malware with wiper code being used. Uh, I, I'm aware of at least one incident where uh, malware with wiper was employed against borders between Ukraine and uh, NATO countries in order to slow down the movement of refugees uh, leaving Ukraine. I think that's a terrible thing and is not serving mankind well to go after humanitarian efforts. Uh, we, are, uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, activity going both ways uh, from non-nation state actors uh, in the conflict. Uh, but I don't believe at this point that uh, cyber has been uh, a medium that has been used as much as it could be by the combatants. Uh, and that's not necessarily a bad thing at this stage. I'm glad, I'm glad to hear that there is a, at least a modicum of positivity in, in, in what we're seeing uh, in an otherwise tragic situation. No, I, Bruce, to be clear, I'm not necessarily positive. <laughs> I'm just saying it's not as bad as I think I got it should be. Yeah, I got you. Um, so, so how is your organization working to translate what you're seeing and the, and the work you're doing to have an impact on both the public and private sector cybersecurity efforts? Well, that's, there's a lot to unpack there because we're very busy here at the Software Engineering Institute. As a federally funded research and development center chartered by the DOD, we are working on a whole host of different projects that our sponsor organization has asked us to go take a look at to advance the practice of cybersecurity, to boldly go where nobody else has gone before in a wide range of uh, different investigative research projects um, to better secure national security as well as national prosperity. Uh, some of the things that we've done that are widely known that I'm really proud of is in working with, for example, CISA. Um, when we had Log4j, I mentioned uh, my colleague, Will, who had put together that Log4 shell scanner. Literally, uh, couple of hours after the public release of that log four shell vulnerability, Will had created a log four uh, shell scanning tool that would help organizations understand, you know, how, what's my risk exposure here? And that was highlighted by Director Easterly and uh, uh, her executive associate director Goldstein in a call to critical infrastructure partners saying, hey, Here's where we stand. Here's a tool that can help you understand what your risk exposure is. And then further, we've been contributing to that broader conversation. We've been helping out with the um, securing organizations like Platform One in the Air Force and doing a GitHub type of security so that you have um, cybersecurity as a service capabilities with, uh, with uh, partnership with uh, Platform One and the vendor community that's working with them. We're advancing the uh, cause of cyber by design through projects that we're engaged in with both government, military, as well as industry. Uh, and further, we're helping enhance cyber resilience by such things as the creation of our uh, Software Engineering Institute and uh, CERT risk and resilience uh, model, helping folks quantify as well as qualify their risk exposure. Uh, we're doing things where we're gathering data on our vulnerability analysis and threat analysis and sharing that data with industry through uh, just massively attended online uh, events where we take that evidence to help move the market to create better tools and better processes for the manufacturing of the code that underpins our economy today, as well as national security. And then finally, we're trying to help shape the future. And we're gonna be uh, uh, launching here in the coming weeks, a discussion on the national agenda for cybersecurity engineering. How do we do a better job as a broader community to build security in from the beginning so that we better harden national security, but also better harden national prosperity and the economy that relies on a safe and secure and trusted, relevant and valued 
uh, information technology environment. So those are some of the things right off the bat, and it, it really excites me working here. I, I can see that, and and uh, I'm excited to have you working there. Uh, you're doing you're doing doing the good the good deeds. Uh, so so what are the, some of the lessons learned in this emerging public private engagement that we can teach? Where we need to do more, do less, create something new that will improve our collective abilities to counter cyber adversaries, and you've even mentioned a few already. Well, there's a lot that everybody can do. First of all, you know, having served in DHS, I, I sincerely believe that it's important that if, in fact, you do have a cyber incident, share what's going on. You know, if you see something, say something. Because if, in fact, you have a, uh, an issue, somebody else can learn from it. And then further, you know, if, in fact, it is discovered that these things, uh, these incidents are, in fact, uh, uh, the result of a nation state actor or a cyber criminal group, we need to know that as well. So picking up the phone, getting online, contacting CISA, or law enforcement, that's critically important. And that's something that not only do we have a responsibility to our own organizations, your business, your um, military unit, your company, your whatever you're in, but we also have a sense of shared responsibility to make sure that we in fact do have that more stable, more secure and, and better information environment and that's something that all of us can contribute to. So if you do see something, say something. And folks like us at the Software Engineering Institute, we're gonna be helping out in not only investigating and doing the postmortem and decomposing that code and figuring out who did what, but also working together with industry to go find out a better way to do um, the production of capabilities that are gonna better protect you and, and our country. That's great. And if I could insert uh, another question here, I look back to when you were selected as the as the first federal CISO back around 2016 timeframe, and you had a list of priorities that you were coming in with, um, one of which really struck me, it was hardening the workforce. And mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, you know, in the, in the six years since then, have we gotten any better at hardening the workforce? It's still a work in progress. Um, I, I, one of the things that I think is really important is, is um, and it gets back to that complexity too. I think uh, we keep on adding layer upon layer upon layer. Uh, at, at some point, you're going to exceed the human cognition threshold. And one of the things that we're trying to do here, and I'm leading a research team uh, here at the Software Engineering Institute, taking a look at the actual impact of complexity on cybersecurity. Um, so that's a work in progress. It probably will be several months before we conclude that. But our th hypothesis is um, centered on a Star Trek phrase um, that Scotty had in Star Trek Three. You know, the more you overthink the plumbing, the easier it is to stop up the drain. <laughs> and right now, our research indicates that Scotty was right. Uh, but we want to make sure that we have the evidence to back that up. In the meantime, something that we're doing here uh, with our cyber workforce development team is putting our research to work through some very meaningful cyber exercises and drills on behalf of the federal government and the United States military. We just finished up a exercise with the Indo-PACOM, the uh, our uh, combatant command out in the Pacific theater of operations uh, called Cyber Endeavor, where we took those best practices and tactics, techniques, and procedures that our research has gathered, and we put them to use in an exercise to help hone skills and test those theories uh, and hypotheses our commanders in the field had. And those iterative exercises are really paying off. And when we do them again and again, we're finding that the workforce gets better. They make faster, better, and more informed decisions. And then further, we're taking some of those same lessons learned, putting them into the President's Cup Challenge, which we just uh, helped DHS uh, run uh, during the winter months. And we're finding that 
the level of performance for those folks who are participating in those iterative training and exercise environments, their performance continues to rise. So we'd like to see more folks have hands-on iterative training that helps the human computer interface. At the same time, we do the research that helps developers come up with better products that are better fits for that human cognition and that human computer interface. Really great point. I, I, I the people are the uh, the forgotten critical control and uh, Greg Tuhill, a towering presence in our profession. Uh, really appreciate the time you spent with us here today. Uh, Director of the new CERT at Carnegie Mellon SCI. Uh, I want to thank you and I want to thank uh, Tom Billingham and uh, and the Billington Cyberbytes. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you.